Here we are in the outlaw cabin. Here we are. 7,000 feet. All loose light cabin. That's right. For the first, hopefully not the last. Yep. Redline Adventures podcast. That's right. <laughs> it's a little weird. I don't really even know where we're going to go with this whole thing. Well, that's the best thing about life yeah. in general. It's always yeah. a little weird. It's a, yeah, right. If know. things aren't a little weird, then I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, right. You're trying to get through normal for me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and the other thing that's weird is like, you know, am I talking to the folks at home? Right. That are going to maybe listen to this in a year when I post this. Strange thing. It's like, <laughs> am I talking to Joe? We're 7,000 feet up on top of a mountain. <laughs> We have a little cabin just talking to each other. Right. But somehow other people are going to listen to us later on. <laughs> right. So they feel like yeah. we're talking to them too. I know. So anyway, I am uh, pretty excited about this. And I've been thinking about it for a long time. And like I was just telling you a second ago, I was telling Allie, I'm like, you know, I think it'd be pretty neat if I had all these guys that I've met over my time in the, the military, you know, I met a bunch of interesting guys Most definitely. doing all kinds of crazy different things. And I think it'd be super cool, you know, to bring guys out, we go fucking ride, we do whatever. And then, uh, sit down and I interview you and talk about yeah. your lunacy <laughs> of a life yeah. and how you got to be where we're at right now. Most 67, definitely. 000 feet. Most definitely yeah. makes sense. I mean, like it's one of those old cliches is that every time an old man dies, a, a library burns to the ground. Right. Yeah. So it's super awesome to get yeah, a bunch right. of guys yeah, yeah. who have interesting lives, uh -huh. who have all kinds of stories mm -hmm. and lessons to tell people right. who in a different time, a different world, wouldn't have had that opportunity to extend the knowledge. Right. But now you can bring them on this platform yeah. and just push it out to people. Yeah, you know, and we were kind of talking about that, right? Like mm. the whole, like, you know, the legacy thing and it's like everyone wants to do their own thing and whatever else, but this is a pretty neat way. And like, obviously you listen to a lot of podcasts. Definitely. I listen to a lot of podcasts, so we kind of like get the idea of how, like how this kind of goes, but it is kind of a neat way <clears throat> to uh, like record some pretty awesome things and like, you know, it's there forever. Right. right. You know, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you give it that expansive idea because I, I watched this video on YouTube that was this guy in, I think it was like 1930, but he was born in 1846. Oh, and they were okay. recording him audio. Yeah. Talk yeah. about his life and in all the, the things he had seen. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, here we are in 2023. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this guy. Listen to this thing from the 40s. Born 180 years, born. years yeah. ago. For real, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like, he watched America be built. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's, uh, yeah. Well, we, you know, you go into a lot of things. On so it was one of those things that it's like, we, you could record interviews for the next 20 years. Yeah. And it'd be like, ah, you know, those are kind of cool. But then if the file's preserved, 200 years later, people right. could find him and be like, this is unreal. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You know? Like, it may not even be that cool for the 20 years, like we're saying, yeah. but, you know. You never know. Years Maybe some like, of those vital records of like, human history. Wait, people would be in a cabin at yeah. 7,000 feet talking? These guys are crazy, man. I'm going back to the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. I'm going to the metaverse. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, like we were saying earlier, I'm going to do my best to... Sh to to keep us on track here. Okay. Yeah, you have to because, because. I'm the lord of tangents. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, right. going all over the place. And I want to, this is about me interviewing you. Right on. And I'm curious about Joe Haynes. Well, you can fuck around and find out. And Missouri. <laughs> is what I'm curious about. <laughs> yeah, uh, from the fucking true yeah. Midwest. So, you know, talk about whatever you want to talk about. I don't know, you know, how it goes. We'll obviously have drinks as we're going. Cool. We got the penalty and whiskey to set the stage here. This is locally, right? Well, it's really not. Uh, it's just, it's kind of It's cool. the way everybody likes to drink around so here. Everyone likes to drink around here. Right on. And unfortunately, something I figured out very recent that kind of is a little upsetting is it's only like 20 years old. Really? Yeah. Really? But they have the bottle set up 
you know, and it looks all old and belted. Well, see, that's you know, that's you know, masterful marketing right there. And they got there. this cork top. Yep. It's like, oh, dude, they've had this since the, the guy, pioneer nope, time. The guys in know. marketing, baby. There's a bunch of suits at a table. Right. Who so do anyway. exactly what whiskey drinkers wanted. Oh, they did. And they started off, you know, full of whiskey. Cheers to it. And we'll, we'll dig into it. So, yeah. So anyway, we've known each other a while. Yeah, damn near a decade. Right? Damn near a decade. We probably met in like 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that on Camp Lejeune. On Camp Lejeune, you know, me and you were both in the Marine Corps. Uh, Era. Fucking booty arm. Get, get some. <laughs> the booty arm for the yeah. boys, you already know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I think that'd be kind of cool, right? If we talked about how we, me and you met first, mm -hmm. and then I want to dig into how you grew up and, like, okay, you know, the whole, the whole deal. How there. we even made it to that. How we even made it to that, but... If I think back to it, I met you. I'm trying to remember when I when I saw you for the first time, because I'll be honest. I think if I remember, I didn't really like you because I was like, I was like Man, this guy's a fucking the real he's a shit marine, real cunt. Yeah, this guy's fucking cocky, <laughs> yeah. and he's fucking you know yep. whatever. Doesn't know whatever care. what doesn't care. And I, and I was obviously a dirtbag as well, but. I kind of thought I cared. At that time in my right. life, I didn't care a lot. Right, right. I cared a lot more later, right? Right. But, uh, I'm trying to remember when exactly I met you, but it would have been definitely liaison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had just went there. Well, when did you get to the unit, right? So I got to 210, the artillery battery, and would have been, would have been, uh, I guess, 2013, because I was at boot camp in September of 2012. Uh, get out of that, you know, SOI, MLS school at 29 Palms, which, you know, yeah, it's not lots great. Of fun. Lots, <laughs> of fun, lots, lots of fun. Lots of fun there. <laughs> and must have been, you know, mid-2013. And then I found myself in liaison later that year. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I... I hit Camp June Golf Battery mid April 2014. Oh, so okay. it was like right before I turned 19. I turned 19 in my first Fort Bragg. Okay, yeah, with, with Golf Battery. With Golf Battery. And I was with Golf Battery until probably late that year. Yeah, we went back to Bragg later in the year and then. Towards the beginning of 2015, my staff sergeant, staff sergeant Rocha, mm -hmm. he was PCSing to Japan. Okay. Which yeah. bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like before he left, he had uh, the most combat action in the battalion. Oh yeah. He had pumped Iraq five times. Oh yeah, dude. And you know what's funny about 210 is it was an artillery battalion, but they had been activated a couple times as infantry. Right. If you remember. Right. And so I feel like there was a lot of combat experience floating around 210. Yeah, well, he was with infantry units like the whole time yeah. until he got put with 210. Yeah, yeah. As a staff sergeant. Well, even the, even the gun bunnies, like the 0811. Well, yeah, that's what, like, that's what was cool about my experience in Golf Battery uh -huh. is that all my superiors, yep. even the lowest NCOs, the corporals, mm -hmm. all had been there. Activated as infantry. Exactly. Yeah, that was so all our seniors. Was like, yeah, I remember so being like, there. All right, dude. All of Whatever our seniors. these guys say goes. They were activated as infantry. They all they did that. Shit. They did that Afghan pump as yep. runs. Yep. And they were whipping it on, you know. Right. And so, so like, that's right. what we showed up into. You right. Know? Which is a pretty unique deal, but uh, so that's right. So I wouldn't have met you when I showed up. It was after I got back from. I was at 210, I got in the putting liaison, the Ford Observer mm -hmm. uh, platoon, whatever you want to call it. Real high and then, speed. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Real high speed. <laughs> we all thought. Yeah. Yeah. And then my fist, my fire support team, mm -hmm. got attached to 1-6 Charlie Company, and I did that me with them, and came back to 210, would have been the end of 2014, because I did like a year and a half with them 
And that's when I was back in liaison. That's probably when I ran into yeah, you. Because then it was that time Sasha Roach was PCS and so he was trying to hook everybody up. Yeah. Because his question was, all right, who wants to deploy? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, I do. I do. So he's like, all right, I'm sending you to liaison then. Dude, dudes, right? Because that's the only I mean, way you get it in the yeah. battalion. Yeah, know? no, he was, he's to this day one of the realest Marines I've ever met. Yeah. Because like to him, he's like, it's not all about that like, hoorah, who's in charge shit. He said, because uh -huh. when the lead starts flying, it's about who's on your team and who really has your fucking back. Right, yeah. And he taught me that from day one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, so he was real cool. So once he was leaving, he was trying to get. That's why all those guys from Golf Battery ended up in liaison. Like so me, was, was Macklemore? Lazaro. Was Macklemore Golf Battery? Enriquez. Remember? He was Golf. Okay, was I was going to say, that sounds like his peer group was all like. Uh, yeah, Golf Battery people. He pumped to yeah. Afghanistan with Golf. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Golf, they were, they were some bad motherfuckers. Got down, dude. Yeah. Got fucking down. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think they had the most hazing cases in the entire <laughs> yeah, Marine yeah, Corps. Dude. <laughs> and it was like, it, I almost felt like, you spent some time in the infantry as well, so did I. Uh, I almost felt like the uh, the batteries at 210 were more savage than the infantry battalions I worked with because everyone was like trying to like prove something. Yes. In the batteries, because yes. they're like, Hey, like we're fucking not infantry men, but we're fucking badass, yeah. you know? Like we fuck shit up. And there was something to that, because yeah. it was I knew. Cause you know, we always talk about uh, how ORs get or ROs get their orders. Uh -huh. You just you graduate, you get your radio search, show up or twenty nine yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're just gonna pump you to all these random units. Mm -hmm. Cause everybody needs comms, everybody needs radio operators. Right. And I'll never forget this dude. Cause we were the only it was Frock fourteen fourteen. Class 14 of the year 2014. But uh, we were the only all male class, mm -hmm. but our instructor was a female. Oh. Staff Sergeant Hollis. <laughs> so she had her fucking hands full. Yeah, yeah. But there was this other instructor who ran PTs and he'd run us through the fucking sand dunes. Yeah. Just murder oh, us. Yeah, dude. Purposely so. murder us. Right, right. And his name was Sergeant Mares. Mm -hmm. And the day we get our orders, he walks into the classroom. And he stands in front of everybody. And again, this story doesn't ring as hard with people who just don't get it. Uh -huh. He stands in front of him, he goes, who got 210? <laughs> <laughs> and me and like five other dudes raise our hand. And he goes, good luck. <laughs> he hit him straight the fuck up. It just walked out. There was two out. parts there. Two parts. He was probably thinking like, because like 210 sucks. Yes, 210 sucks. Also, it's gonna fall. Yeah, I'm about to push your <laughs> yeah. shit in when you get there. Yeah. yeah. Get ready. Yeah, get it's ready. Who again? Yeah. yeah. And it was like probably four months before I showed up there. I don't know if you remember that whole problem with this fat fuck. Jordan. Nice uh -huh. old Jordan. Uh -huh. Lance, one of Lance Corps was that pumped Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's out there just in the haze. Just fest. dude, just just big chest. Yeah, I don't feel that. He grabs yeah. this dude, this boot, uh -huh. boot drop, picks him up. Fucking slams him on the ground and the sappy broke his back. Broke his back. I paralyzed fucking, him, dude. I heard about that, dude. Fucking paralyzed this kid. Yeah. And on a field off. Just out training. Just to be like, what's because, up, boom? Because he's a boot. Smash. Fucking Hulk smash. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Teach you a lesson to be new in the Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, fuck. And that's what I mean. <laughs> that existed at those batteries. That did not exist at the infantry battalion I went to. No, yeah, that, that's the thing. Is like when I attached one six alpha. Uh -huh. so I oh yeah, to, yeah, that's right. A couple years later, you mm -hmm. you know yeah. after me in, si in sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like all right. That didn't exist. You guys are cool. You guys are all tough, but you guys aren't psychopaths of using the younger guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you dude, know, I, I dude, you're right. I did eight years in the core, and I obviously saw a lot of different things in the core. Right. The batteries at two ten. <laughs> so when about we the always fucking got there, <laughs> was. A bunch of fucking psychopaths yeah. doing shit like paralyzing yep. boots because they're a fucking new guy. Something and I'm gonna to prove. fucking tackle you <laughs> and prove. Yeah, it was like how what they call popping your cherry. Yeah, yeah. You're like, are right, we gonna let you fire the gun, the gun for the first time? time. Yeah. Alright, you pull the string. Now <laughs> yeah. we jump you. No, well no, now you what? Drink the Yeah, you gotta fucking you gotta eat the primer. Eat the primer, drink the fucking off, you know? And then you're gonna fight us all. And then you're gonna fight all of us. Yeah. 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 Like, okay, sweet. Yeah, all right, I know. <laughs> and I can remember well, I don't wanna get too much into that. But anyway. Because we're gonna we got a lot to talk about. Right, right. So <laughs> 
we gotta get out of the battery because the roaches, that's why roaches leaving, uh, and he's trying to hook up whoever he can. So he pushes me and all those guys to liaison, and I'd say that was probably when we first met. How do it been? Because you were probably E4. I was. Yep. Your E4 by then. Or I was maybe like a senior Lance. Yeah. Yeah, um, probably. So I haven't communicated, and I was probably a new Lance Corporal. You were probably a new Lance Corporal. Yeah, yeah. You know. But I had just done that. Uh, yeah, you deployment, you're with, salty. deployment <laughs> with the infantry. Yeah, salty. <laughs> and I'm coming back to yeah. the fucking liaison Here platoon. Here we go. Let's show you pussies how it's done. Yeah. yeah, what's up? And then I get you in the group that's yep. probably like cocky. Oh, like, yeah. I was cunt all the way through. <laughs> yeah. I was never yeah, yeah. not a cunt. <laughs> and like, you're like, I don't give a fuck what you've done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how many people did you murder? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you murder anyone? It's like, no. I don't respect you. All right. Because <laughs> that was the thing about those guys who was like, you could see that shit in their mm -hmm. eyes, man. Mm -hmm. That's what, like. The guys that did it for real. Yeah. yeah. Samson Rocha, like, mm -hmm. he never, he got mad once because we were a bunch of boots, couldn't get up a fucking OE. Mm hmm but he never like got crazy like people imagine Marines do. Right. Yeah. You know, but yep, you yep. could just see he had that look in his eyes, like. But all the all the that. inexperienced like NCOs, that's what they do. They get yeah. angry. They oh, yell. Blow up. Try to prove that they are right. fucking whatever. You know. Hear the rank in my voice. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it never goes anywhere. It goes. It works for some kids, but. For anyone with a head on their shoulders, they just totally shut you off. Yeah, you know, it's like, you, just, you see how it's done. We couldn't do it. Sassar was like, all right, fuck you pussies. Mm -hmm. There was Kevlar on us. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess I, it's real fuzzy to me when I ran into you. I can just remember you being there. Yeah, because it, it would have been, we were just a part of that, like, work group. You were in that group, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and you know, that's, because I, I was there, I was there, uh, end of 14, early 15, until I went to selection for MARSOC in mid-60. Right. So really, it was only, you know, a year, year and a half. I mean, you yeah. even actually hung yeah. out in the Marine Corps. Exactly, because then, I mean, in November of 15, that's when I attached to 1-6. Oh, really? I, that's when I attached to 1-6. So I honestly, moved. only about a year. Yeah, I moved to their you barracks. You only, only hung out with each other for about a year. Pretty much. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Because then I moved to their barracks and I did that work up with them for like the next six months. Mm -hmm. And then we deployed. No shit. Yeah. No shit. That's kind of funny to think about. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what like I tell people. Like the relationship that me and you built. Right. Well, that's what I tell people. It's only about a year. Think about dog ears. Uh -huh. I want you to know, there's something called Marine Corps years. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to Marine tell Corps you, years. Yeah. days in the Marine Corps is just hours in civilian life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah. It goes on. Holy shit, dude. That's kind of funny to think about. I guess another I mean, way time is just I, When I look back at those times, I think like, man, I spent a lot of time with Joe. But it really, it was only about a year. Right. You know? Damn, okay. So at that time... um, the, the 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 NCOs and the you know whoever would have been like you know me and Cooksey right and um I guess I'm trying to think uh Griswold uh, Zach Heron was there Zach Heron yeah. was uh Tim McGinnis there yep Tim yep, McGinnis, McGinnis was there, there. Well, Moore was there somehow. Macklemore was kind of our yeah. Our big Sarge, I'm like, you know, the bro Sarge, literally massive, yeah, massive, yeah. yeah. And um, you have Ritigi running the show, and then we have Ritigi. Who was that staff sergeant? That dude was a dill, though. But he was the kind of staff <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a couple of them. But dude, you know, you know, I ran into Ritigi in Hawaii. Really? When I was a raider? No shit. Yeah. I hit him up, dude, because uh, he had told me he was stationed in Hawaii. Right. I think he was a master sergeant when I was there. No shit. Uh, and I had been talking to him and, you know, I kind of kept in touch a little cause he was kind of one, one of the, you know, not to get off on any, any of this too far, but he was kind of one of the ones that after I got in some trouble, he saw something in me and was like, besides me getting in trouble, was able to be like, Hey, you know, I, I think you're a fucking good kid. But that dude that was has cool. has potential. That dude was cool. You I know? gave him a hard time being a cunt all the time, but he was cool. Yeah. And he, uh, so we kept in touch, right? After I went to Marsoc and stuff. But he, uh, yeah, he's like a master sergeant in Hawaii. It's a okay. unit. And I was a raider and my team went to Hawaii 
for this fucking yeah. special dive and climbing thing right, we were right. doing. And I was like, yo, Beto. <laughs> Beto over <laughs> Beto. <laughs> he, hey, dog, are you in Hawaii or what? Right. And I went and linked up with him, dude, and he like hung out with us for a bit. It was super fucking fun. I bet. Bit, dude. I bet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Dude, a lot of interesting people at that time, 2015, 16 at Liaison. Dude, Do you yeah. know that? Interesting crowd. Interesting crowd, wild motherfuckers. Yep. Do you know that like five of those guys ended up becoming JTACs and went to Marsoc? No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, remember the band guy? Yeah. He became a JTAC oh, and went to Marsoc. There was you another- You surround yourself. There right? was another guy. Literally all the sergeants, when we were like corporals and lance corporals mm -hmm. at that time, most of them. Uh, Tim McGinnis, another one. I don't know if should be using names. Right, it's not Where's the name dropping all <laughs> yeah, these right. fucking names? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. We are this... boop, we are boop podcasters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway. anyway. Oh God, yeah. two years from now, sorry Tim, I don't yeah. ever listen yeah. to this. <laughs> it's like, anyway. check it out, man. Paul this Gris blows up, you're famous. Paul Griswold, another yeah. one. JTAC went to Marsoc. Tim McGinnis, JTAC went to Marsoc. Band guy, JTAC went to Marsoc. Right. Uh, Jason Goff, remember him? Dude. JTAC Goff was, is, Goff was cool, man. Goff, Goff was is cool. a bad motherfucker. Yeah, no doubt. He and I, he was cool with me as a corporal, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. we went we got down on some field ops. Jason yeah. Goff was the man. Yeah, I yeah. fucked with him a lot. And then myself and Jake Cooksey, I think, were the only ones that went the CSO route, went to Marsha. Mm -hmm. But seriously, like of our group of folks, probably thirty of us, there was like ten. And the That's nuts. Dude. Isn't that crazy? That's a good portion. And you, you know, we were just like a bunch of DJs, dude. Yep. At the time. Yep. And it was so. fucking nutty. But anyway, so yeah, we all meet. Um, we pretty know, much so. built. Like well, a, a I don't want to get too deep into this, right? We yeah. meet there. We ate. We. We. Uh, we kind of networked a relationship, a relationship yeah. because it was like. Through the time of us being there, you picked up NCO, yeah. and then other guys you came to the Marine Corps with uh -huh. were NCOs together, uh -huh. and I had turned into like, oh, now I'm senior Lance Corporal. Yeah, yeah, you crowd. were like kind of the senior Lance. And then we caught a boot drop. <laughs> then we had a boot drop. And do you remember Which that way? field off? Well, we just wrecked <laughs> their fucking lives. We were filling up Kevlar's full of water and freezing them. Burying their rifles. Burying their rifles. Oh my god. Waking them up in the oh. middle of the night like, what's up, motherfuckers? And Dude, yeah, TP yeah. and Jason Goff Jason come down Jason off the Goff. hill like, yeah, yeah. What, the what the fuck, fuck are, are you guys <laughs> doing? <laughs> we're just standing there like, oh. Uh, and I'm in my underwear. I am too. Because if you remember, we <laughs> snuck a bottle of whiskey and got it was fucked a up. a half gallon of Tennessee <laughs> Honey Jack Daniels. And we're like, dude. These boots are fucking... Well, I'll never forget, bro. We're in the back, just fucking slamming it, having a good old time. <laughs> and Cooksey's sitting there, and he looks over, and he goes, Yes, that's his rifle. Yeah. He didn't take his rifle to he bed his with him. Yep. And that was, that was it. That was enough for us. We're, we're like, like, set us up. Every yeah. last one of them. <laughs> we're going to get him. These boots don't understand. Yeah. Accountability. 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 Yeah. What are you gonna do? Somebody oh sneaks up on you, get your rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Just piss drunk. <laughs> Wake up, motherfucker. Like, we're gonna take these fuckers on a patrol. Yeah. And we're gonna ambush them. <laughs> we're gonna fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god, dude. Oh, it's so funny. It's I kept in touch with a lot of that boot drop, mm -hmm. you know, over the years. <laughs> and dude, we did, man. We we gave it to him that one. But uh. Anyway, I don't want to get too into that because we're going to come back right. to that. Right. So from there, I think probably a, a month, maybe two later, I picked up Corporal. Yep. And, and we, we were, were kind of like all peers. Yeah, we were all hanging out. We were all boys. And uh, um, well, let's take a step back. How many? A lot of steps back. Okay. Okay. So I've obviously heard a lot from you over the years. Got a general idea of where right. you grew up, where you, what you did, and whatnot. But where was Joe Haynes born? Born uh, Sedalia, Missouri. Uh -huh. Raised on the fifty-eight and a half mile marker of the Lake of the Ozarks. Okay, right on the water. Yeah, yeah. So I lived in the same house on the same piece of property uh -huh. to the day I was eighteen and some change. Oh no, shit! There yeah. the whole time. The whole entire time. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's like me and my oldest brother, they were from Kansas City when he was like two. But for the most part, we all grew up there. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's kind of wild when you see it now. It's, it's been a long time, but like if you come down the driveways, there's huge, you, I call them rock walls, but all they are is like fence frames. Sure. Filled with giant rocks. Oh, okay, yeah. Because in the Ozarks, there's no dirt. It's just rock. Oh, is it rocky out it's there? It's just fucking rock. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it, because the, the crazy thing is, like, wow, look at these fences, but my dad basically drove a tractor around, and my brothers picked up every last one of those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> every last one of them. Yeah. And he built fences with it. and So, I mean, it was, it was paved by the time I was born. I still had gravel road, but Ivy Bend Road is probably like 18 miles. Yeah. And when my brothers were growing up, it was a gravel road. No oh, shit. So if you were going to go to town, you were going to take 20 miles of gravel to the highway and then you were oh, going to take, shit. yeah, you were going to take another 15 miles to the next small town. Oh, so you guys are back in there. I mean, I'm there. It, it's one of those things. Cause it's like normal. Mm -hmm. Cause I, this is how I grew up. Right, we talked about this. So I make you just this, accustom things to be yep. like, oh, everyone, everyone's like this. I make this drive every day, mm -hmm. nothing new, mm -hmm. and all the buddies I've ever brought to like the place I grew up from the Marine Corps. I can remember being like halfway home down Ivan Road <laughs> and just seeing them look around <laughs> like, where the fuck, where are, the fuck we? are we going, dude? <laughs> you gonna ask murder me when you get there? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like some people are like, oh, I grew up backwoods, and we're like, all right. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, so we're real out in the middle of fucking nowhere, you know, not a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. Gotta find a way to entertain yourself. Because mm -hmm. the high speed internet didn't come around for I mean I got a cell phone in the teenage years and a Well you're born what year though? Ninety five. Ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. So I mean I got the smartphone at sixteen, but we didn't have high speed internet at the house until I was a Lance Corporal. Oh, no shit. Straight up. Couldn't even, no shit. There was never high speed internet at my house until I was a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps. On your own dime. That was the first time I went home and I was like, damn, we got the internet. Or, sorry, you, uh, yeah, 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 at your house until you've been in a couple of years, they got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, 100%. It was like, you watch TV, it's cable. Okay. Fucking, Okay. Because that's another reason why, you know, people are like, why don't you respond and shit. It's like, dude. That actually kind of, maybe, I mean, that almost explains a lot about you. You kind of have an old soul. Like, in it's, that sense. it's just how we had to grow up. It was like, you know, obviously we're teenagers. We want to communicate the cell phones. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I was going to get a text message or send a text message, I had to leave my phone in the fucking window in the perfect spot <laughs> yeah. just to get the signal. Yeah. So yeah. I'd type a message, I'd send it, I'd leave it there. Uh -huh. I'd go live my life and i come back to see if I'd received anything. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's why it was never a problem for me to have my phone in my pocket. I right. never had my phone on me ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's, that's deep, like in the Ozarks, Missouri. Deep, deep. Because the way a lot of people know the lake is it's this super recreational, vacation oasis mm -hmm. but the lake how big is the lake uh, i mean people some people have a hard on for this kind of shit mm -hmm. because it's like 91 miles in expanse oh it's huge massive oh, massive they call it the oh. magic dragon because it's like oh okay okay imagine it's it's man-made yeah so oh, you, is it real yes yeah, so you have the truman and the bag dammed dam. it up you dam the osage and mm -hmm. other rivers in the area and pretty much all this is is like the low valley farmlands in mm. between the hills that's now full of water. Oh shit. Yeah. So it's like before 1931, back in the day. Same with, same with Rimrock, right? This is back in the 30s when they were doing these projects. Yep. Like, they were, it was just land where you would have your cattle or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so like I guess they had this crazy idea to dam it up. And now it's this huge, like, snaked lake. No shit. So it's 91 miles start to finish. Holy shit. Yeah, but it's got so many coves. Yeah, yeah. Across the In way on both yeah, yeah. ends. And there's there's hundreds of thousands of homes on it. Okay, okay. And, and how many live right off? And right, you know, I mean, from like the Bagnell Dam is like the zero mile mark. Mm -hmm. It's the very beginning of the lake. That's where mm -hmm. Osage Beach, Lake Ozark. 
your real easy access businesses. And right, yeah. you got the people in the million dollar homes, we got the two big boats, the jet skis, you know, or, or the Jones is keeping up with the Johnsons. Yeah, we got yeah. all the vacation Oh, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get further you, and further and, down the lake, it gets more and more back country. Yeah. You know, and I, your folks were not the Joneses on the lake. Not once ever. No, like From what said, I've heard you talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we grew up damn near at the 60s, so the 58 and a half. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're literally 60 miles of water away from the Bagel Dam. Okay. Yeah. Real slow. And we're this, we're basically the only community of lakefront that's in Morgan County. Mm -hmm. Pretty much Camden and Miller County have the rest of the lakefront. But they give Ivy Bend to Morgan County because it's a fucking ghetto. He said the guy that developed it, he could have done it the same way they did the lake, but instead he just plotted out small lots, fifty dollars down, fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So you had these kind of people haul their fucking single wide down there, mm. live hard for however yeah. long, <laughs> yeah. and then disappear. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, granted, my grandpa bought our lot in 1964 before all that happened, and he built the original cabin, like the basement foundation of the house he put up. Mm -hmm. And that was what it was. It was like, this is this little cabin on the lake. And then in the 80s, when my parents moved there, my dad put the A-frame on it. Yeah. Which gave it two levels and a loft. And then in 96, after my little sister was born, they built on to the side. Way after you were born. A year later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's strange because I have these like, visions of the, the, the construction of it, uh -huh. but it's not like a, a real vivid memory, Right, right. You know? And you live there, uh, folks are married. Yep. Are they still? Yeah, my folks got married in 1988. So. Still together? Yes. No shit. Do they still live there? Yes. In that, that same place? In that same exact house. No shit. And how many siblings? So, two older brothers, one little sister. Okay. Yeah, so yeah same with me. Four. There's four of us. Yeah, and... Uh, my but brothers are... I got two sisters. You got the one. Okay. My brothers are 10 and 7 years older than me. No shit. Yes. So that... And that's... You know what I tell people again? It has a lot to do with who I am because you know how brothers are. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a whole lot of winning for me. Mm -hmm. And we're back. Okay. On the overheat camera intermission. We are back. A little piss break. <laughs> Overheated camera. Change the battery. Change the battery. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. So, we're back in Missouri. Right. Is that me or is that you? That's you. Well, I don't know where the I'm rest just... of them are. Oh, here. Gracias. Mm -hmm. These are the last ones and then we're just on the whiskey for the rest of the night. <sighs> Should it be? There's been, there's been worse. There's been worse. <laughs> yeah. could, but... have, could have a half gallon of tin high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, <clears throat> We're, we're in Missouri. We're born. We're, uh, we got siblings. We yep. got, we're, we're Lake of the Ozarks. How, so you have siblings. What are you doing as a kid? As a kid? Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you're not real mobile as a young person in terms of like mm -hmm. hopping in your car and going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if you were gonna, it was a three mile walk to asphalt. Mm -hmm anywhere right and there wasn't anything there except tweakers yeah so i stayed in the gravel neighborhood and you just you had to get real imaginative at yeah, the end yeah. of the day it was like real imaginative or real natural yeah you know we yeah. all like to think that's kind of weird but it's like dude that's just how right kids grew up and i mean that's you're just you're dreaming you know as a kid like oh this is what i'll do I just run around. I mean, run around in the fucking woods. Yeah, like a wild person, just imagining medieval battles, ancient battles, yeah, right. having a good old time, living out your life's purpose. I mean, all the <laughs> yeah. way to the point to this day, to the end of my life. I mean, and I hope you know. I mean, maybe people would be real cool and give me some good shit. But mm -hmm. till I'm dead, the coolest gift I've ever got. Mm -hmm. I was probably ten, maybe eleven. I did this on, I did imaginary fighting foes to the scale mm -hmm. that my dad woodwork fashioned swords dude, and a shield. Dude. Yeah, it was badass. I mean, a perfect round yeah, shield, painted it green. I just had wooden swords. 
just running around Ivy Bend. Just, what a dad. Dude. Just waging war. What a dad he to is, like man. feed into that. You know what's funny is like he recognized he was like this kid just killing people imaginary. My dad and my neighbor's dad uh, did the same fucking shit with us. Great dads. They fed into our imagination because what we would do, me and my neighbor kids, uh, we handful of folks live, you know, all of us, you know, two to ten acre lots, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of that. Not in the woods, but lots of land to run around on. Right, right. Around. We would play army. Hell yeah. And fucking get some, dude. We would just be just murdering each other all the time. (laughs) And so what my neighbor's dad did is he would cut out wood guns, like replica AK-47s. Nice. Out of wood. Right. And like sand them down and make them all nice. Yeah. And we would just run around with these like fake AK-47s and get some. And my dad would give us his old fatigues from when he was in Marine and wear them, you know? And fucking dig holes, you know. And yeah, like I mean, when I was that young, it was like, this is really cool. But now looking back, I'm like, impressive woodwork. Like, yeah. you really put some time and effort into that <laughs> yeah, kind of right. shit, you know. And we've talked about this, you know. But most, nowadays, most dads are just not feeding into that. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and my dad's always uh, been a no excuses, don't feel sorry for you kind of person. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you fall down. Hurt you're yourself. upset, you know, cry, it's like, well, I ain't gonna help nothing. Mm-hmm. You gotta get the fuck up and mm-hmm. keep going. You know, so, and the, in terms of, like, the neighborhood, again, and now, in this perspective, it's like, you feel for those kids, but I didn't have a lot of friends in the area because there wasn't, not that there wasn't a lot of people, but it wasn't people that I meshed with. Yeah. So to say. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, and I, I'm always been my own kind of person uh-huh. in general, so I don't, I don't mesh with everybody anyway. Right. So my brothers are a lot older, and my little sister isn't interested in playing the Battle of Troy. Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I spent a lot of time just entertaining myself. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. so that I think had a lot to do with how I come up just to be super comfortable. Because like, like when we're out here, I have no problem if we just sat there silently. As so you I, said a few times. So I'd be like, <clears throat> I'm just like, man. Yeah. We kill the engines and we're like, just listening to the yes. sound of the air passing through the trees. It's like, this is pure existence mm-hmm. right here. You know, don't it do really nothing is. else. It really is, yeah. And even myself, right? You'll say those things and I'm like, mm, you're right. I need to be like, and I, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times. I'm like way more appreciative of this area than I was when I was younger. But even now, I'm not as appreciative of it as I should be. But when I get folks that come out, they say the same thing every time. You know, it's like the views, the, the opportunity to do things, right. the, the atmosphere. It's right. like, dude, it's incredible. Most definitely. And I'm just, sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, pretty cool. I'm like, I've been in this meadow a thousand times. Right. <laughs> you know? Right, right. So. But yeah, it's just something about, you know, because like when I mentioned those moments, it's not just here. Mm-hmm. It's just that this is one of those few places left where if you just stop, you're in you the stillness. You can just listen to stillness. You can't stillness. do that you know I mean? in very many Like places. if you're down in town, it doesn't work. Uh-uh. I mean, you you can get there, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? If you're trained in your practice and mm-hmm. you're aware with it, but it's just so horn honking. Yeah. Billboard. Uh, no electricity. Yes. Yeah. 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 But up here, it's just, it, it the stillness can grab you. All you gotta do is It stop. does. It just... Yeah. Turn that engine off and it's like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's like, snowmobiling's fucking sweet. It's just the best moments is when everything is just stopped. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, yesterday we was at that spot with that fire. Like, I just looked out and just watched the snow falls. Like, man, this, this, this is life right life, here. Life, baby. You know? Yeah, know? And that's when people are upset because you don't slow <laughs> down enough to just appreciate the experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know, man. And it's taking me a, it's taking me a while in my life to get to the point where I do appreciate those moments. Mm. Because like I've said a couple times, dude, I grew up doing everything we've done this weekend. Right. I grew up doing it all the time. Right. And my dad appreciated those things because he had life experience. Right. And he was trying to show me that, but I didn't appreciate it's, it at all. I, it's just a hard thing I can't really imagine because 
young people don't have that range of perspective. Zero perspective. Uh, you know what I mean? Because I think my perspective was everyone does this. This is not is special. That the way I think about it is like the only way you can affect that is if you take the young kid other places. You have, that's the only you're like, way. Come with me to Iraq. Yeah. Look so at you this. can see. And you're like, oh my god, we're gonna live in this hut and eat or rice every day. Come with like, me to North Carolina. Yeah. With a hundred thousand fucking shitheads. Yeah. Yep. And live in the fucking go live in the swamp real yeah. quick. You're gonna get for eaten four alive years. by mosquitoes. And then move home. Yeah, then we're gonna Tell me if you here. like where you're from. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's like we was talking about. It's like if <clears throat> we could have some kind of system that would pay for Americans to take trips overseas. They do, man. They really do. Find a way to appreciate this place. I mean, because that, that's exactly what happened to me and you, you know? We both got out, had shitty experiences, good experiences, life experiences. Right. And both went back home and now appreciate where we're from, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's... I always try to, you know, perpetuate the charming side, if there is. But at the end of the day, I'll say just because I've seen so much more in the United States... Mm -hmm. It's rough growing up in Missouri. Yeah, right? It's rough, man. <laughs> yeah, to Missouri. You know? it's rough. <laughs> like, Missouri's rough. They it's call a, it misery. For a yeah, reason, yeah, yeah. And people would always say that everywhere I went, but the more and more states <laughs> I see, I'm like, I get where these people are coming from, you know? They come to Missouri and they're like, oh, hell no. Yeah. I would right. be living here. Yeah. You know? So it's just, it's a certain kind of people. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's just like, I could tell when I meet people from other places, like when I moved to Indiana, I kind of had my my way with the social dynamic because it was like, this is somebody who really doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Some insane person from Missouri <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. what they like. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Little fucking Huckleberry Finn here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Look around and find Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're in, you know, you're in Missouri. And you're doing all that. And then, is there anything profound when you're younger, before high school, that you think kind of makes you who you are? Besides the growing up in the woods and doing that stuff? Yeah, man, I mean, I hated the school I went to. Yeah. Hated it, real small town. Pre-high school? Well, it's the same school, K through 12. Oh, okay. It's a K through 12. Are all the class, like how many, are all the classrooms in the same building or? Yes. I mean, oh shit! You're okay. talking about okay. The high schoolers be walking by the middle schoolers on the way to class. Oh no shit! You know, and no they try shit. they do try to keep the elementary school kids cordoned off. Uh huh. But you're in the same building. Yeah. No you know? shit. Yeah, you'll see them down there in the little elementary school area. Uh -huh. You know, and then the middle schoolers all know who the high schoolers are. Whoa. And if you got middle school little siblings, you know, uh -huh. they're kind of in the mix and. It's Dude, a fucking weird that's place. That's weird. Man. Yeah, that's weird. Weird place. Yeah. And you got to think, like, granted, we had some good staff members who were intelligent and were trying to educate the youth. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people who grew up in the town, went to school at that place, mm -hmm. were now working there. And now they work there. And they're like, I'm going to here, baby. This is my pile of shit. Yeah, my pile of shit. <laughs> you know? And that's yeah, we, just... We talked about it a couple times. And I would say that that trait defined a lot of my experience in the sense that if there's, you know, like, seen this thing where people say, well, what's your, if you have one superpower, what is it? Mm -hmm. My ability to see through bullshit, mm -hmm. you know, and. I would agree. You do have that superpower. Yeah. You know, it's like, you just you're pretty good at that, not yeah. gonna feed me that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's either real or it isn't. At the end of the day, I've got a real clear lens for that stuff. Mm -hmm. And those kind of people, Full of shit to the max. Yeah, you know, there like that's why like I had respect for some teachers and I treat them as mentors <clears throat> because they were respectable people. Mm -hmm. But I we talked a long time ago about how I wish I would have played or taken high school sports more seriously, just because it would have been more fun. Yeah. I had a super athletic base, right. and I think we could have won. Yeah, yeah, you could have done something with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, whether you know, what I mean, now I if I could do it however I wanted, I would still join the Marine Corps afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I would have liked to have been a more prosperous time for me. Yeah, yeah. It was just that I could never make it all the way through the season or on the team because I didn't respect who was in charge. Mm -hmm. And that's it's like I got no respect for this person because I think he's full of shit. Yeah, right, yeah. And you know, you know what's funny is like when I was younger, I didn't pick up on that stuff. <clears throat> and me and you are very different. 
you know, we are, have a good relationship for whatever reason, but we're like very different. I didn't pick up on that stuff when I was younger. I was like, I was, I was more of a kid that was like, you know, uh, tell me to do this and I'm doing it, right. you know? Right, right. Uh, which, you know, led to me being successful in different reasons, right? Right. Than right. you. We, we are successful in, for different reasons. You yeah. Know? Yeah, you know, for sure. And that's uh, just like, we kept it real at my house. Yeah. You know, my parents kept it real. My brothers kept it real. Uh-huh. You know, and everybody called bullshit and you had to stay on your P's and Q's. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? So it was like, when I saw people who were full of shit trying to tell me how to live my life, I was like, no. Yeah. I don't even care that I'm 12. <laughs> You're full of shit. That you know? is... Probably, if I were to predict how Joe Haynes was as a preteen, that's exactly how I would have guessed. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, people yeah. were like, aren't you excited to have kids? I'm like, I remember who I was. <laughs> yeah, Definitely right. not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That sounds horrifying. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it was, yeah, it was yeah. A, a little bit of a crazy time. And small town world, small town living. Mm-hmm. So I wanted out. Mm-hmm. I wanted out real bad. Well, but, Okay when you're older, mm. but how's high school? What are you doing in high school? High school, I'm uh, working at a grocery store and sleeping with as many teenage girls as possible. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Like a real- Are you party. partying in high school? Every single weekend and day okay. possible. Okay, okay, right, okay. Yeah. So some like, do, some don't, right? It's funny, right. you'll talk to some guys and they're like, oh no, I never touched alcohol until I was well, that been cool. in the Marine Corps. Yeah, no, that would have been cool. It was yeah. just like... Or like, others are like, no, I was doing cocaine when I was 15. Yeah. This know? small town we went to school in, the pinnacle of existence was get slammer hammer drunk. Uh-huh. And fucking, woo! Yeah, and then... In some field. And then bang some fucking... Yep, bang some five. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and live your best life. Right, yeah. You know, they're more county. So, we did end up getting... You know, it's like, you work with what you got. I had a buddy in high school who lived right on the edge of town. Uh-huh. I mean, like, it was basically in town, but it was off this gravel road that was right outside the city limits. Uh-huh. So the town cops couldn't come to the residence. Okay. And we would have these insane parties there. <laughs> and I worked at a grocery store. Yeah. And there was this British guy in produce who was like 23. And he would buy me all the liquor I wanted <laughs> yeah. in exchange for a six pack. Oh, get some. Yeah. Yeah. So I just roll into my boy's house, just double brown bags full <laughs> of liquor and beer. Like, we about to get it yeah. on, baby. Yeah. And we just invite everybody we knew. Uh-huh. We just go insane at this right. place. Yeah. And that's what we did. Uh-huh. That's all we fucking did. Yeah. That I have a I have a very similar experience growing up in the small town here. It's, you know, mm. same deal. You're you know, how can we get booze? Right. All we're doing all week is planning how, who's having the big party? Who's got the place where we can meet up and how are we getting booze? Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, we had it all figured out. We had the house, I had the connections, uh-huh. and all we had to do was invite people. <laughs> yeah, right. And they will come. <laughs> yep. People will go. We'll fucking slam. Crazy okay. time. And yeah, I mean, it was just like, we had the fun whenever we could. Mm-hmm. But I just knew that I'm not gonna live my whole life like this. Right. I'm not gonna just be perpetually in this town getting shit drunk. I didn't. I didn't have that connection when I was younger. I was like, the Marine Corps will be dope. I want to do that. But I like fucking getting drunk and doing whatever. You know. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I, I didn't make that connection. Yet. I did it because it was like this is what's available right now. Uh huh. We're just gonna party. Okay, Fuck. but you were thinking, you were already thinking like, I want to get past this sort of thing. Most definitely, I'm I will leave else. this town. Yeah, I wasn't Regardless. when I was younger. It wasn't, it hadn't really crossed my mind yet. Yeah, no, like to the point that if I could go back and influence anything, because I was such a bad kid mm-hmm. that my mom, there was a military school probably two hours away. Yeah. A military boarding school. My mom okay. was considering sending my ass <laughs> Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And yeah. in retrospect, I'm like, probably should have. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. Probably should have. Yeah. Instead of being Glad just, you didn't. Right. <laughs> you know, but uh, regardless, it's just like, I always say that, like one day you'll see it, but uh, once I was like 13, I moved down in the basement into my oldest brother's room. He, mm-hmm. he bought his own house. Mm-hmm. His wife and kids, they live there now. And you know, it's kind of where I would do my chilling, stuff like that. And 
obviously map wise, I'm just like looking across the lake. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a town on the other side or whatever. Okay. But in my perspective, I'm looking across the lake and on the other side of those trees, you know, side of that hill is the rest of the world. Oh, okay. And I got to get to it. Yeah. I got to see. The other side of the lake has it figured out. Yeah. Well, not, and I knew, you know, I mean, it was, it was more of like a mindset kind of thing. Okay. I'm not trying to go to the other side of the lake. Right. But I want to see the whole world. Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That's the rest of the world over there. Uh -huh. Because I'm trapped here. Yeah. You know, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything about it. Right, right. So it's like, I gotta find my way out. Okay. And I mean, then there comes senior year in high school. And I used to always tell people joining the Marine Corps was plan C for me. Mm -hmm. But I never came up with plan A or B. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, the recruiter showed up at school one day and I was like, what's up, man? And I mean, in the lunchroom, in the cafeteria. Yeah. Pulled up. They brought out the pull-up bar. They, I think they teach them that. Yeah. They're like, hey, yeah, it's a tactic. Go to the lunchroom with the pull-up bar. Yep. And be in uniform. It. Yep. And ask those kids that have nothing going on. Do you want to be something? Yep. One hundred percent. And I mean, it was like in the back of my mind, because uh, the guy I grew up with, his family, we were super young, and he said he was like, I'll join the Marine Corps. And I was like, man, fuck yeah, it's a sweet idea. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But uh, he he ended up going like juvie and mm -hmm. didn't work out for him. That's it. And then the other memory I have is like earlier in high school, like sophomore year, which is uh, I think one of the very cool exercises that ever happened there. The lady who was teaching our keyboarding class, she had everybody draw a picture of what you wanted to do. Mm. You know, which. Some people would think, oh, maybe that's just nuance, but it's like, that's pure visualization. Right? Yeah, that's visualization. Visualization is yeah. so powerful. Right. And they sort of try to tell me, if you can make the picture of where you want to go as vivid as the shit you look at on the internet, mm -hmm. you will find a way to get there. Right, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. people have a problem because it's just so vague in their mind. They're not visualizing it. They're you not, got, they're you got to get down to the nitty gritty, yeah. the details. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, and one day you'll find yourself exactly there going, whoa, mm -hmm. drink this up. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, had, I've had those moments in my life where I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm doing the thing and I'm like, all of a sudden I, I have kind of, not an out of body experience, it's like they but I, awareness. I go, I'm like, oh, oh fuck, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know it. Yeah, and that's like what a lot of people who've done stuff like that try to say that it's, it's not, you've never, like, you gotta love David Goggins, you never arrived. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. always on that You're always journey. On, on the path. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's just those few moments where you have that awareness of like, damn, I'm really I, I am doing this thing. Yeah. Regardless, the exercise of the visualization and drawing what you want to do, all I ever remember doing is drawing this dude in a fucking flak and Kevlar. No shit. With a rifle. No shit. Just moving to contact. You were already thinking it. 100%. And, and that's like... You know, I try not to like fucking drop my balls on people too uh -huh. much. Yeah. But spiritually, soul wise, however my blood, mm -hmm. it works. That's who I've always been. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm running around the woods with a wooden sword. Right. Like, who wants to die? Yeah, serving calm. You know, we're like, come <laughs> yeah. on, come get this shit. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. I was born to be a warrior. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I came out so they could put me in the ranks yeah. and I could fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah. End of story. Yeah. Right, you know, right. it's like, so I'm in the school, like, this is dumb as shit. Uh -huh. Somebody train me in combat, please. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, too, because, like, you know, I, you know, for me, same deal, right? I mean, I spent so much of my childhood, like, just dreaming about, you know, being a soldier. Yep. You know, I was soldiering around the area. Right. You know? We were living out of the backpack, fucking swinging AK 47s mm -hmm. at each other, and for years, you know, digging fighting holes, like, <laughs> like in the pasture. Yes. And it was like the dream, dude, was like, right. It was like, that was like the best existence ever, you know, it was just like that freedom to be able to do those yeah. things. And it's funny too, because for me, when I was in high school, I kind of let that go because then it was more about like, oh, I just want to party and fucking chase teenage tail and whatever um but uh 
you know, then all of a sudden when it clicked for me that I was going to join the Marine Corps, it was like so obvious. You right. know, I'm like, oh, well, this fits. This is it. Yep, definitely. I've been thinking about this for a lot of years. Definitely. And, you know, when you think about it in retrospect, it's like, yeah, it makes sense how that happened. You know, I was never going to go because some people, why don't you go to college? Well, I wasn't very. Back from a dead battery intermission. Dead battery, piss break, a couple chips. It works. And a quick bowl of whiskey. Let's jump and start. This is what gets the juices flowing. It's true. No, it's true. Can't be denied. This is uh, American history right here. That's American history. Baby. This is how the pioneers built the world. The pioneers did. Yeah. Or however we caught cowboy Rob Banks. And how you look at it. that water. Mm -hmm. This is not my chaser. Good. Because I'm out of beer. <laughs> Water's probably a better chaser. So, uh, anyway, right. back to the show. Here we are. <clears throat> the Red Line Adventures podcast. We're out here. Episode number one. Let's go! <laughs> number one, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we was in the early So we're talking years. about pot, uh, or sorry, we're talking about high school. Mm -hmm. Which, you know what I mean? It's like, depending on how deep in the layers you want to get, obviously there's a whole life story there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, you for real. I mean? yeah. Builds a lot of who you are. High school in itself, man, could be you its know? own. Yeah, so it's just, at the end of the day, had a job all throughout high school that had a lot to do with how my life developed, but, uh, Long story short, it wrapped up the moment that the recruiter showed up in the cafeteria. And I was like, all right, what's up? I hit some pull-ups. And then they got my number. That was it. And yeah, I mean, pretty much because I forget the staff sergeant's name. He was pretty cool. But the guy that recruited me was Sergeant Duncan, 0311. Oh, yeah, baby. Pushed into Fallujah. Get some. You know what I mean? And he's yeah. there as a recruiter like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just fucking deal with all these goofy kids but uh we were pretty cool and uh, it was a smooth process you know like it's different you see how like some people need waivers and all uh -huh. that i was i was what you were looking for i was, I was an athletic same, 18 year old kid mm -hmm. checked every with box, ambition push him through i am i was the exact same way dude My, you know no waivers done i could have had i could have went to boot camp the day i signed up all i had to do was fill out the paperwork you know no questions, no problems. I could have been just fine with the fitness and the whatever. Yep. Obviously, I trained for it before I went, but... I did not. Nothing? Yeah, I guess that's a good point you could put in there. I did not at all. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I was probably an hour from the recruiter's office. Uh -huh. And, you know, started doing he's like, you play basketball. Yeah, you'd be all right. Yeah, you'd be all right, you know? <laughs> And, you know, I'm like, all right, so what's my regiment to get ready for boot camp? We're gonna drink every weekend, like we do <laughs> always. Yeah. 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 You know, so it was like I fucking went there, just dehydrated out of my mind. <laughs> and I didn't even know what dehydration was. Right. You know, because it was like the closer and closer it got, because I remember I was supposed to go two weeks into September, like the thirteenth, mm -hmm. and then I get a call like of thirteen. Of 13. Yeah. Yeah. So like September 9th or September 13th, 2013 was supposed to be my ship date. Mm -hmm. And then he calls me like halfway through August. And he's like, hey, we got a space on September 2nd. You ready? Like, Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fucking working in a factory. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Let's, this Let's place. do this. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, we get the word, ship date confirmed. So it's like, I, had, I call everybody. I said, time to party. <laughs> You know, the timeline is slipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with this the is all I got left. The timeline just got cut by a week. Let's go. Let's go hard. <laughs> and that's one of the best parties we had in that place. There's so many parties at my homeboy's house in high school. But uh, the one where I was leaving, my last party before I went to the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. Crazy. Off the chain. <laughs> Everybody was there getting fucked up. You know, 
We had the hot tub going, oh, bitches yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. a crazy <laughs> time, crazy time. Bunch of teenagers losing their shit. Yeah. We partied so hard that you remember the initial fitness test you take when you get to boot camp? Uh huh. Like you aren't even. It's like the. It's called the. The IST. IST, yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's like. It's the pull ups. It's like a half crunches, PFT. And you don't run the full three miles. It's like uh -huh. a mile and a half. Uh huh. You know, it's like. I think they make you run it to qualify to go to boot camp. Yeah. At some yeah, point with a recruiter. Uh -huh. So you obviously pass it there. And I'll never forget. Uh, we did the pull ups. Uh huh. And then the crunches. Yeah. And we got in formation to run. And then I was like. Whoa, I'm getting real lightheaded, and I'm like about to pass the fuck out. No way. Because we've also been up for like two days. Yeah, yeah, paperwork. they keep you up filling we've up been paperwork. Up for like two or three days just like filling shit out. Getting your stuff. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and it's like, is that on purpose? I think so. <laughs> I think so. That's hot. It's like a, I think it is too. It's like to shock you, right? You're to immediately like, just fatigued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think I should like, marching around in the middle of the night in your civvies you yeah know? so i'm like fucking about to pass it i'll never forget you know because i'm sure you know they thought oh, this motherfucker is being retarded uh -huh. but you know and you learn the culture of fast i'm like sir sure, sir yeah. this group's about to pass the fuck out <laughs> 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 you know like, come here motherfucker they basically marched me with my collar down to bas yeah slam me with an iv no way yeah slam me with an iv Go to fucking MRP platoon. No. Yes. For an entire week. And then it dropped me in, because I was supposed to be in Delta. Uh huh. And then dropped me in the hotel. Dude, company. I was in Delta. You're right. It's it strange the way it worked out because it was like, I went that week early and I was supposed to be in Delta. Mm -hmm. But I ended up in hotel, which would have been the company I was in on the, my original shit date. Right. Oh, okay. So you went early I just went a week to early, graduate just like with the same folks. Get IV'd and <laughs> save MRP for a week. Because I'm still hungover yeah. from the bender. Yeah. Yep, from the fucking bender. And uh, again, one of those things of how relative Marine Corps time is. I was in MRP for a week. Uh -huh. Ages. Oh, Every yeah. day I'm like, dude, what uh, do you use to kill yourself? Here? I fucked everything up. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh no. Yeah. This is the worst thing ever. Yeah. There's a bunch of fucking medical broken motherfuckers. I know. Doing or soft bodies yeah. that are just like. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I was questioning all my decisions for sure. <laughs> and then I finally dropped into a hotel a week later and it was cool. Had badass drill instructors, you know, all fucking stacked out. Yeah. Yep. All Afghan vests. At that time, dude, at that time, 2000, you know, probably up until 2015, right? There were some stacked, yeah, bad motherfuckers. And that's where I made that point because about. when you're a DI, you're at about eight years at that point, yep. you know. And that would have been eight years in at 2013, right? So I mean, so you, you were came in 05. yeah, 2005 when it was hot, hot, dude, hot. So you were right. a boot drop, like oh shit, uh -huh. contact front. I, I know, I know. For real, man. Yeah. There were some bad motherfuckers in that time. Legit. Legit. And every it was a, it was so different, man. Because I got out in 2021. Right. And I saw some of the kids that were in and mm -hmm. some of the whatever. Granted, the area where I worked at that time was very different. Right. But I was still seeing the regular Marine Corps, man. Yeah. It was so different. I bet. That's why I thought we were fortunate because you came in under everybody you came who under that. that shit. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. the same game out here, my mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, I mean, some guys with, you know, uh, what, and it's funny too because you don't know shit about no fuck at that time. Right. So you just think that that's normal. You're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, well, fuck, Marines are, they fucking go to combat and they kill people. And yeah. like, that just happens 24 yeah. 7. This is what we do. Every day of the week. Yeah. Right. Every, you know, forever. Right. But you don't realize that that was actually a really special time because you had all those folks that had been doing that for a lot of See, years. And that is what people don't get that I don't try to get off on tangents explaining, but it's like, that's what makes the Marine Corps special. Mm -hmm. And you just said, this time of just war and chaos, mm -hmm. special time for the Marine Corps. Special time for the producing Marine Corps. special Marines. Mm -hmm. You are. Bad motherfuckers, this is what we play for. Yep, yep. We're not here for the benefits. We're not here for the first and the 15th. No. We're here to get dropped in and push whoever shit and you say. 
and I don't really care what for what reason. You know, I'm it, just legitimately here in the Marine Corps. <laughs> this is who we are. Point me where you want. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Because it it's like, you know, to get like corny historical about it. Again, people lose like the profoundness of those references. Like the old school, everybody talks about now the two four hundred. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's like, yeah. dude, the Germans of the forties. Said these feared dudes these were people. from hell. Yeah, they the, feared they, these people. They were like, "Oh, we gonna fight the army. We gonna fight the American army. We're cool." cool and cool. they said, "The Marines are coming." And they're like, "The satanic dogs the, of war. <laughs> yeah. We should probably leave. Yeah, Dude, yeah we should yeah. get out of here, man." I like you those know? other guys. Those dudes yeah. fuck shit up. I know, man. I know. It's, you know, so it's, it's like you felt like you had to live up to this have, just right. warlike reputation. And you're in, you know, you're in there for three months getting fed that you know indoctrination but it's like th like this is real shit like look mm -hmm. like this reputation is here for a reason and here's yeah. why here's right. the history here's what we've been doing from the jump yeah and so we got problems in tripoli get in the boat get in the boat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we yeah. sail in there but the fuck yeah. shit up 1776 <laughs> yeah fuck around and yeah. find out and guess what we were drunk when we yeah. started <laughs> they all started just like this. We were a little hot yeah. drinking. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know those guys want to fight. Right, I know, man. It is it is what makes the Marine Corps special, is the history, you know? Yeah, man. It is and just... the, the arm, every other branch doesn't teach their history like the Marine Corps does. Right. And that is what indoctrinates us, is like, you know, you teach that history, and you go, that cloth is now you. Right. You're you know, you that... are that cloth now. Yeah, and been out disconnected from it, you know, long enough that it's like I pull from that reservoir mm -hmm. to keep myself going sometimes. Yeah. So now yeah. it's like standard for me, I'm gonna go bang out 20 pull ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got to. Cause Cause I, I, yeah. I hit 20 and I bang. I can't hit 20. Right. You got these little the fuckers fuck in the Marine Corps doing 20. <laughs> I'm doing 20, dude. Yeah, so it's like bang 20 and it's like a few more for chesty. For chesty. For chesty. Yeah. You already know. We're going to get a few more for chesty. Anytime I ever think about and quitting on a workout. And when we're done with that, one for the core, baby. Yeah, one for the core. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good, dude. Okay, so yeah. boot camp. Were you anything crazy in boot camp? I was the very first squad leader of my platoon. Uh -huh. I was the very first person who was recognized with an extra awareness of yeah. like, this dude knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like, everybody had, I forget what the doctrine was, but it was like this chain of orders that everybody had to remember and right. recite perfectly. Yep. And you know, they grill, sometimes you grill 75 people in a span <laughs> yeah. of two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was the only person who could say it word for word. You could get it done. Yeah, yeah. I was like, bam. So You're it was like, like boom. Squad leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so I like, bet. In, in, in true Marine Corps fashion, I lose my position because I just blow dick at Drew. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They're like, this guy's good, but he cannot dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm in the fucking front, leading, and <laughs> trying to teach him this movement, and I just do it wrong like three times in a row. He's like, fired, fired, <laughs> you're done. Fired. Next. <laughs> yeah. So from but that, that is what's so dumb about. Boot camp is like the guy who ends up being in charge can just like dance really well. Right. You know? Right. Dance monkey dance. But yeah, it's like so I took this position from, from there, it was like, alright. And I would do it differently if you do it again, obviously. But from that time in my life, I was like, alright, I'm not trying to stand out like that because uh -huh. that's just how you get your shit wrecked. Yep. You know, it's like anytime, obviously, and then they're teaching that chain of command thing. Anytime somebody's fucking up. Whoever's in charge is responsible mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So the only build I held after that was Hike Master. The Hike Master. The Hike Master. It was me and one other dude, fucking Gerger, I think he was. That might have been a guy in one six. Either way, it was every single rock we did. Uh -huh. I was at the end of one chain, and he was at the end of the other. No way. And we made sure nobody fell out. Really? Yes. Because again. We're going, they recognize, like, this dude is not going anywhere. So they put me all the way at the back. He can he can survive that yeah. slinky. And when people are like, oh, no. Yeah. Haynes is going to be like, get the fuck in Get in there, bitch. Yeah. yeah, no, never, like, 
You know that the old school West Coast shit when right before you're about to get your EGA, uh -huh. they fucking take you up the Reaper. Right, right. You know that mythological shit. Uh -huh. And everybody just face to the wall, right. trying to work their way up. And I see a drill searcher. I'll never forget hearing his name holler from like 200 yards below. Hands, hands, and I look down. Little black dude, Carter Franks, just dying <laughs> on the side of this mountain. He said. Get down here! <laughs> and I was like, fuck! Get this guy up yeah, there! hand down there! And he's like, grab Haynes' pack! No! Yeah, and he just grabs onto my LB pack. And drag and I'm just him dragging up. this motherfucker to the top <laughs> of the Reaper. I was like, come on, Carter Franks! <laughs> oh. oh, dude, that's good. Yeah, so that was the only build of importance I ever held in that phase of training. I didn't. What's funny is I didn't, I didn't hold any serious. Billet. What's funny for, you know, I don't want to get to it to me, but what's funny for me in most of my career was like, I never was like the dude in charge. I was just always the dude that could be a, a good, a, a good employee in the environment you put me in. Right. You know? Right. So like, I was always like, Hey, here's the task, you know? And they'd be like, Hey, you know, do this thing. And I could like thrive in that task. Yeah. You know, whatever yeah. it was. And so, like, I, you know, high PFTs, high whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no. Good shooter. I knew the squad. Good at following direction. Wasn't going to yeah. last. Yeah. We was real early on, you know, that first phase where it's like you're just slaughtering these young recruits. <laughs> yeah. And we were, like, organizing the squad or some dumb shit like that. You know, mm -hmm. making sure everything was online, all yeah, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm out here tasking people out, delegating orders. And I tell some other dude in the platoon to do something. And he says, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, cool. And one of the drills are Sergeant Prank, he hears me. And that's how you know it's like people mean shit. Because like, he didn't explode, so he just come real close. And he was like, if I ever say cool again, I'm going to be fucking lungs out. <laughs> 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 and I was like, Roger that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was like, man, okay, nothing funny. is cool here. I'll remember that. Uh, it was really funny when I was stationed at Camp Pendleton because... The Marsoc barracks, the Marsoc compound is right below the Reaper. Okay. The hill. Yeah, the fucking hill. And our compound where we would train is right below the Reaper, like on the other side. Nice. So we would drive up there every day. That's where our range was. That's where we had a mount town, all right, kinds of right. shit, was where the Reaper was. And I, you think it's in the middle of nowhere when you're training. Right, right. But it was so funny because we would see the boot camp. You know, yep. hit the Reaper as we're like driving to the range, and it's like, man, I remember that. Right. It's funny. It's like, a, it's an epic moment in the Marine Corps saga. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. And like, and then, you know, like all the, anyway, yeah, you got all like the, all the cool stuff going on there. But, uh, and they okay. timed it perfectly. I mean, we, we got up and got packed up ready to rock at like 3 a.m. Oh yeah, of course. Because by the time we were on top of it, like the sun was coming up. Yeah, that, they epic always dude. time it that way. You're like fucking giving your EGA. I'm uh -huh. like, this is the most epic shit that ever happened to me. Dude, my they entire do a life. really good job of that. You know, because you know? that's the other thing that separates people. I think, you know, in terms of the mindset, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you joined the army and now you're a soldier. You're a soldier. You join the Navy. Now and you're they a call you a soldier the day you get there. You join the Air Force, now you're airman. He's like, oh, you sign up for the Marine Corps? That's cool, bitch. You we'll ain't see, a Marine. If you're here yeah. in three months, we'll see about whether you rate or not. That is that is another piece, right? I talked about the history there, but that's, a, that's another piece that the Marine Corps does such a good job about. It's like, you will earn this EGA. Yeah. On the top of the Reaper, if you're still standing. Yeah, and when it was put in my hands, it was yeah. like, damn. Dude. Powerful. Yeah. Every Epic Marine moment. remembers that EGA getting slapped in their yeah. hand, and here you go. Your drill yeah. started looking you in the face like, you done made it. Uh -huh. You made it, boy. Yeah, dude, it's so powerful. Uh, and it's, you know, yeah, it's just so powerful. And it's like, you know, it's nothing crazy. Like, they... It's not like they were like failing kids in boot camp. There's a handful that don't make it through. Right. But like, they'll get you there, but they make you earn it, you know, which is Every step cool. of the way. Yeah, no doubt. 
So it was like I graduated from there and the Delta class, the one that I was supposed to be in, they had like fucking like 45 days of leave mm -hmm. because they graduated right before like Thanksgiving. Right. So they put them on holiday leave to like early January. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty common. Yeah. Because the whole military shuts down yeah. for the month of December. Right. And yeah. And I graduated December 9. So we lucked out and got like 30 days. Yeah, right. You know, right. So I went on. Recruiting like, duty. Fucking, I graduated boot camp. Oh, so bad. Shit, was like, man. Let's fucking drink. Yeah. You know? Let's drink and I'm bad yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm hardcore. What's up? But yeah, so we did that for like a month before I went to SOI. We did a thing where we fucked with one of my buddy's moms because she, like, she was one of those people who was afraid of, like, my family's pit bulls growing up. You know, real, like, kind of superstitious about whatever. I'm listening. And, uh, we talked, me and my friend, and we are like, dude, let's just mess with it real quick. Because, obviously, I hadn't seen her since I went to boot camp. And Is I, that right in your face? No, it's good. And then, uh, I come into their house mm -hmm. and I just do it real robotically. I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like fucking turn and face and sit down. I'm sitting there like. <laughs> He's like asking me questions. I'm like, no, ma'am. <laughs> you know, and she, I can see her just like bugged out, like, what they do to him? Oh my <laughs> god, yeah. Uh, and we started bursting out laughing and shit, uh, just fucking with right. it. But uh, that was a good little bit of fun we had, really. Yeah, that was so funny. Like, my cousin, Trent, who was the recon Marine I was talking mm -hmm. about, he joined the Marine Corps one year before me. And so I got to see him come back right. and saw the whole experience. And we all thought when he came back that he would be like a fucking robot. Right. Because that's the perception, right? Right, right. Go in the Marine Corps, you're a fucking robot. you just like, you know, yep. like. Yep. But then, like, he came back with the same personality, but, like, with a new experience. Yep, yep. And we were like, what the fuck? Yep. Like, so, like, that's what people person. think, yeah. though. They're like, yeah, definitely. They're like, definitely. oh, dude, you, you She thought I was just going to be ready to murder on command. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, but, uh, okay. So, boot camp. SOI. You know. I think it's super cool that the Marine Corps... Sends every fucking marine. Yeah, I think it's mad the infantry training. That's just another one of those like things that stitches it together. It does, dude. And it's it like, really nope, does. I definitely did infantry training. Uh -huh. I can shoot the machine guns. I can go on patrol. What it was I can dig run the holes, radios. I can dig the put holes. up machine gun positions. Yeah, yeah. And fucking firefights. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And it's like it, it, it. You know, when you're doing it, it seems, and it's like clear this build, you know, yeah. everything, right? All yeah. the basic tasks. And it's like, when you're doing it, it seems like, oh, this is fucking bullshit, you know, whatever. Right. But you don't realize, man, like, oh, their branches are not that way. Right. They're not sending their typewriters right. Right. to go fucking shoot fucking machine guns and dig holes and yeah. patrol and get in gunfights, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> crazy, crazy time. And, so. you know, you got all kinds of people from, like, the similar timeline you're in in the Marine Corps going there uh -huh. for different jobs. Yeah. And I always, it was cool because... In every phase of my training, I had either like one person or like a group of people that I was super cool with. Yeah, always, right? You always. Know? And I'll never forget first checking in there, I was Fox Company. Mm -hmm. And I seen this dude, I seen my last name on this guy's ass. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and like, uh, Haynes. Yeah. And I said, hey, bro, I need to get my camis on. Uh -huh. And he was like, what? And he looked and he saw his last name on my chest. On your chest, yeah. yeah. Funny dude, uh, black guy. Uh huh. So it was like everybody, like he called me Joe, I called him DJ. Mm -hmm. We were super tight. Yeah. But everyone called him Black Haynes. <laughs> <laughs> Classic yeah. military. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He Classic was military. But the instructors did their best not to. Right. You know what I mean? They were like, Haynes, those are here. They were like, well, the DJ. other Haynes. Yes. Yeah. They even go by his first name. <laughs> they want to be like Black Haynes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but no, but we were super cool. Dude was a crazy athlete. Mm -hmm. He was like on that American Ninja Warrior shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so we go out to the old course and he'd just be like, yeah. going crazy. And <laughs> yeah. I, I'll never forget the first time I tried to go full tilt on an old course. I was like, <laughs> I got this. I was sprinting across this beam, lose my footing, ribs to no. it, roll off. Oh. Yeah. I, I could hear the combat structures trying not to die laughing <laughs> by how hard I just ate shit. Because I tried to go full tilt on this yeah, old yeah, course. Right. 
I was like, all right, I'm not American Ninja <laughs> yeah, here. I'm, I'm just, just a white dude from yeah, Missouri. I better just <laughs> mind my P's and Q's on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he no. eat that shit up. He had a good gig. After we graduated, he went to fucking Miramar. Oh, yeah. He air wing. Air wing. Gel. Yeah, yeah, gel. But it's so funny, man. You know, you get uh, a guy who's like, his job is to work on helicopters. And that's all he's going to do his whole career. Yep. But there he is, fucking setting up a fucking machine gun yep. position, digging a fucking hole, getting after it. Uh, and that's it's just. It's cool. It you know, that mindset. It's like, worst case scenario. This is going to be your job. That's going to be your job. This is yep. going to be your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we ask you, fill in. That, you're going to fill in, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. And it's so, it's, it's a, that's another piece. I think SOI is really underrated. It's another piece of the Marine Corps that like really makes the Marine Corps the most Marine Corps, definitely, you know, most definitely. Uh, everybody goes. Everyone, everyone goes, um, which is awesome. And, you know, for me, I, at that time, realized, I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be anything but this. Right. But it took me a long time to kind of decide that I wanted to do something else. But for me, when I was in SLI, I was like, dude, what the fuck am I doing? I should have been a fucking grunt. <laughs> and then being an element with a grunt. Battalion honestly, though, in a honestly, I would never change it right. only because how me and you ended up and right. the the experiences we got, the typical 0311 didn't get. Yeah, you know? exactly. It was like, wow, if you were here, this would really blow. I know, right. You know. But anyway, so that's cool. We don't have to go too deep into yeah. RO school. We know how it is. But radio, we were both radio yes. operators. Yep. Uh which is such a unique job in the Marine right. Corps. But this was, for probably you as well, because we were West Coast Marines, yep. this is the first place you get to where you go, oh, there's females that also do this job. Yeah, 100%, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. There's and girls then, here? You're like, what? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, and that's cool stuff, you know. You learn the job of doing all that. Setting yeah. up crypto, setting up the radios, yeah. setting up the fucking antennas, doing all that yeah. bullshit. Uh, any, anything of note there? I mean, kept it 100 always. You yeah, know, it was a dry barracks, but we got real fucked up. Dry barracks. Did they make you guys wear camis 24-7? No. When I was there? It was Cammy's 24-7. Yeah, well, Not a lot off base. I mean, there was this moment, again, we were all male class, but uh -huh. we had a female instructor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was it was still the teaching environment, so when you were in the class, you, like, turned in your phones. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You collect everybody's phones, mm -hmm. and we had a friend, that friend group I had, 29 Palms, like, I lived with, like, two of the guys, and then right next to the room, mm -hmm. the two of them lived. Oh, yeah. And one of our guys was like 24. <laughs> yeah. So we'd go down to the PX. Oh, just yeah. Buy some booze. Oh, you get Backpack some booze. it back to the beer. Yeah, yeah. And one night we drank this half gallon of Jaeger. <laughs> just getting slapped. Yeah, yeah. And for whatever reason, I'm like, everybody get this picture. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's all. I got the half gallon on my hand. You yeah. Know, everybody well, this is so unique. Yep. I'm the first Marine to ever, to do, ever this. do this. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's whatever. It's a cool little memory. So we got the photos. And I'm turning my phone, and you know, the nosy ass lady that mm -hmm. Sergeant Hollins is, mm -hmm. my mom sends me a text message or something. She's like, phone's going off during class. Whose is this? Uh -huh. And I'm the kind of lunatic that doesn't have a passcode on my phone. But at that time, you I don't think there was passcodes. There was, but it wasn't. Are you sure? Yeah, but it was something you had was. to enable. Okay. Now it's like, put a passcode on your phone. You have to. And you're the crazy person if you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still just open my phone. Uh -huh. But at that time, again, no passcode. She pops it open, and she wants to know who shit it is. So she goes to the photos. And what's she find? Dick pics. No, a group of Marines oh. in the barracks with a bottle of Jägermeister. <laughs> so she's like, hold on, hold on. I'm kind of laughing at the fact that I went straight to the dick pics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I wish that's what she would have found. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, like, oh, oh Joe. 
young Joe Honestly. Haynes looking for some ass. Yeah. No, if what I would have known that's what she was going to do, <laughs> I'd have had some pictures of my right. there, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to at least experience this. Yeah. But yeah, she finds pictures of us getting all fucked up. But uh, there's only like, I think there's four of us in the picture. It's me and two other guys in my class, and then there's another guy that I went to boot camp with. Okay. He was like my homie in boot camp. Mm -hmm. And he was like the tech side of comm. You know, there was like three oh, of us data. Data. Yeah, yeah, data. He yeah, was yeah. data. Mm -hmm. But we hung out, he'd come out and party in our bear or whatever. Right. So it was like the four of us in the picture, but she only recognized me and my guy Boyce. So she's like, you guys are fucked. So he and I did- Everyone's underage? Everyone's underage. The best part was there was another dude in the picture in our platoon that I was really cool with at that time. But he was such a generic looking white guy that she didn't notice him. No. Oh. Swear to God, I'll show you the picture later. It's just, his face is huge. He's like, but he's such a generic looking <laughs> white dude. Generic looking white Marine. She didn't even pick him out. <laughs> she was like, hands and boys, get over here. No. And she, looked, she shows the picture and I'm just sitting there thinking, what about traffic? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's I'm, in, not gonna, he's I'm not going to rat yeah, on him. Like, on him, but I'm yeah. like, you don't see him there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in the classroom like, don't say nothing. Yeah, and I'm like, obviously. But then, then me and Boyce did four hours on, four hours off of Firewatch for like the next 10 days. No. Yes. Dude. We were just walking around 29 Palms with radios, just like. <laughs> you no, know, he had vodka in his camel back. <laughs> just like, no. yeah. You know, of course. We'd be looking out for each other like it's nap time. Yeah. Like I hit the rack. Yeah. You make sure nobody's coming. Of course. We're getting slammed. But uh that was I mean the only real thing in note, like again standard radio school. We got fucked up when we could. Right. Had the homies and then on the job. Probably got your ass hazed. Oh, yeah. Ran up into the sand, into the mountains. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Classic, classic fucking uh, 0621 school. We're going on a platoon run into the sand, climb the hills. Yeah, yeah don't worry. In the you desert. Will hit your life by the time it's done. <laughs> yeah. I know, and you know. Yeah. Anyway. One of my favorite parts about it was when we practiced good old McMap. Dude. We did some grappling. Like, Dude. Looking back on that, I tell people I said. Be grappled in gravel pits. Dude, that's funny you bring that up. I have never done so much fucking hand-to-hand -hand training as I did Radio in RO school. school. You were like, get in the pit. Radio school. <laughs> Fight. <laughs> did you guys, so did you guys do that thing where they would flood the, uh, they would flood the pit with water? Oh, yeah. And then they would get the entire schoolhouse surrounding the pit with like 500 mm -hmm. Marines. And then you guys would like, fucking fight in the middle with like yes. 10 on 10 and like have like a ball you have to like get across the court or yeah. whatever but like you could grab anyone and tackle them and then start like hand to hand fighting them right did you guys do that those were some they were rare but crazier monsters i mean we would always do one-on-ones inside the class yes they'd be like sit down on your ass you go back to back and when the instructor was like, go, you fucking turn. Yeah, he fight. was getting after the fight's yeah. on. You know, it's a straight Dude, up duel. I, I almost forgot about this, but like, I have never done so much rolling yeah. as I did in radio operator yeah. school. And I was which was so fun. Yeah. That's like the most Marine Corps thing. Like, we're here to teach you how to use communications equipment, but you guys are gonna we're fight down to the pit. You guys are gonna fight each other in yeah. the sand pit like no every doubt. day. No doubt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's like it's seared in the brain because it's like taking a shower afterwards. Your elbows and knees are just scathed fuck, from the dude. rocks yeah. and the water. I'm like, oh god, it hurts. I dude, I almost forgot. But uh, it, for when I was there, there was the guy in charge, the master gunnery sergeant mm -hmm. in charge, was a fucking little Mexican dude. It was like a ball of muscle. Yeah, and he loved to fight. <laughs> He just loved to fight. Yeah. And so like once a week, dude, he would have, he would organize these mosh pits. Right. Where the whole schoolhouse would be like 500 fucking con kids would surround the pit and then they'd fill it with fucking water. So it's like muddy <laughs> sand. And then I forget what the fuck they called it. I don't know if you ever played this, but it was I'm like, on this sport. Oh, okay. Well, it was like, 
10 on 10, your team, and you had to, like, get this ball that was, like, a huge fucking, like, beach ball that, like, wouldn't blow up. Right. And you had to, like, get it to the other side. But... Why, in the process, any of the the 10 on 10 could tackle each other right. and start, like, mic-mapping. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so, Fuck like, yeah. you'd be, like, running full sprint, and there'd be, like, a full collision. Like, boom! People would, like, blow up. And then, like, someone, off, like, one of the 10 off of the side would, like, start grappling somebody. Okay. And, like, shoving their face in the sand, you know. And then, like... All the Marines would be like surrounding the fight, like, oh, yeah. yeah. And see, while the ball's like going over there, you know. That's that shit when you're in, you know, in that moment, it's like, yeah, this is it, man. This, <laughs> yeah. this is what we do. Yeah. But if you could just be like a random civilian and watch, you'd be like, holy then what hell. What the fuck are you guys doing? What are these animals doing? Yeah. And then we leave with like a really mediocre, like, education on how to use radios. Right. But right. god damn if we didn't fight each other. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. So, anyway, our fucking radio operator school. Good place, good stuff. But then you go to 210. I got dropped in the Golf battery. You know, like I said, that is... Right to golf battery? Right to golf. Yeah, yeah no. I've, North, North Carolina. Yeah. North Kakalaki. <laughs> Straight up. I mean, I'll never forget again. That guy was like, good luck in 210. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it don't sound good. Yeah. And then go out, get picked up, get taken to battalion, and you know, S1's tasking you out. It's like, he's golf. I'm like, <laughs> golf. There's something sinister about that, but <laughs> whatever. Hotel. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and then this, these dudes, salty, you know, they were, they were corporals, 08 corporals, came pick me up, and they're like, they're Wrangler Jeep. Got yeah, all, yeah. Got all my shit. Pick up, we got boots coming in. Yeah, got all my <laughs> shit. You know, so throw it in the back of his Jeep. Give me a fucking barracks room. Cool, I had the barracks room to myself for a long time. Uh, when I first rare. Dropped. Very rare. Very rare. But I lived next to like some salty guys and ended up being kind of cool with them. But it was a drop in. And then I, I one of my boot experience, I remember being sent to SIF to get all my gear. Mm-hmm. Right, because it was like that was the thing. Like, we got to get hands to sift because we're going to brag in seven days. And yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah. We're bringing the boot. Yeah. So we're just like, <laughs> all right, go to they. They drop me off at sift early as fuck in the morning, uh-huh. and they give me all my sift gear. I'm like, all right, cool. I got all this gear, and then it's like nobody's coming to pick me up. Mm. So I'm I've got all this gear in my back, and I'm walking from sift yep. to M Street, dude. This is a fucking rite of passage. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're like cool. But it's more than like a pack, right? Yeah. It's like a pack. No, it's the pack. A day with pack. All the gear. And a bunch of loose. Yeah, shit. all the gear you're ever gonna be issued. Yeah. I've got it all on my back. And, and you're like, dude, I guess I gotta yeah, walk. How do you know who this guy was? I get probably halfway there, and this marine in his pickup truck, he's like. Throw your pack in the back. Dude! <laughs> dude, you know what is fucking hilarious about that? It is the exact same thing happened to me. No shit. Is I got my I got to fucking in street and they're like, hey, we gotta get your SIF gear. So my corporals fucking drop me off at SIF. And I get my gear. <laughs> and they're like, hey. And they go, they actually said it in their in their like in their fucking bullshit trucks, whatever they're right. driving. He like out the window, he like looks at his watch, he goes, hey. You need to be at the shop at 2 p.m. And it's like 11, you know? See you later. Right. And I'm like, they drive away. And I'm like, looking at my what vehicle am I in boots that I just got yeah. our Civ gear together. And we're like, I guess we're going to walk home, guys. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Lamborghini's from here on out. <laughs> so we start walking the road, dude, back to the barracks. And some old retired Marine, who is like a contractor now, Mm -hmm. clearly like did some shit in the Marine Corps, pulls up, we're like, you know, two miles down the road from SIF, he pulls in, swings in with his truck, and he goes, hey guys, put your fucking gear in my truck. (laughs) He's like, I'm driving you to your fucking, your barracks, you know? And we get in, and we're like, oh, thank you, sir, thank you, sir, you know, because we're like boots, you know? And he's just frustrated 
Not in the military. Right. He was a retired Marine right. that was a contractor now. So frustrated. And he's like, where are you guys going? In street? Oh, okay. Drives us to our barracks. And he like backs us in and we throw our shit in. And he just goes, he, he's like trying to tell us. He's like, look guys, don't, he's like so frustrated, right? He goes, don't let this experience ruin your fucking military career. Right. He goes, like, don't do this to your, you know, right. your young Marines that you right. get in a couple years. And we had no idea what he was talking about. Right. We're like, what do you mean, dude? Like, we're just 